What's up? Today I'd like to share with you the top 5 opening traps in one of my most favorite openings for white, which is the bishop's opening. It arises from the first moves pawn e4, pawn e5, most standard opening moves, and then you play bishop c4, which gets your opponent off their opening knowledge and it's still a perfectly sound move. Here the main move for black, which we're gonna see most frequently in your games, is knight to f6, therefore mostly we're gonna be analyzing this move. It develops the knight, puts pressure onto this pawn on e4, and there are a couple different ways for white to handle that. One of the simplest is of course simply playing knight to c3, developing your knight, and if black responds to with bishop to c5, again just makes sense, normal developing move, there is an interesting approach here. Instead of playing a standard move knight to f3, you can go with pawn to d3, delaying development of your kingside knight, because you've got something else in mind. Here's what it is. When black responds with pawn to d6, instead of developing the knight once again, you first push the f pawn forward. And what you get here is a great possibilities for your future expansion on the king side, because now you have this f pawn, which is helping you to potentially open up the f file in the future. Let's say after a castle, and you have your rook standing there, or it's ready also to potentially be pushed further to f5, giving you some space advantage there. All in all, it sets you for the nice attack in the middle game later on, and you have kind of an improved version of the king's gambit where you play the same move f4 but it's not a sacrifice because this pawn is protected therefore i can never win the pawn in addition to that you're setting a clever trap along the way after you play pawn to f4 which looks like not a traditional move because you don't play knight f3 which is a usual move your opponent may think that it's the wrong move to play and they can punish you for that by going knight to g4 here and now the knight and bishop come together to attack the square f2, so either bishop f2 can attack your king, or the knight in the future can go there and hit the rook and the queen in the d1, therefore it looks pretty unpleasant for white. But here you play another evil move, pawn f5. You just get the space advantage on the king side, and you can't ignore a pawn's threats of, at all, even you, you rather invite black to execute it, because right now with this pawn on f5, you block the way of the black's bishop from here, it no longer defends the knight, and therefore, if black does any random move, you're gonna simply go ahead and take this knight over here on g4. Therefore, black is more or less forced to play knight f2, but that looks just great for black, it looks winning, because it hits the queen and the rook, it's a fork, and black thinks at this point that they're gonna win soon here this game. But then you play queen h5, and all of a sudden you start this extremely powerful kingside attack seemingly out of nothing. Now right now the threat is pretty simple, queen takes f7, this is supported by the bishop, therefore that would be a checkmate. But black thinks, okay, then I can just castle. Anyway, I was going to castle, so that's not a big deal. But you follow up with bishop g5, getting one more piece closer to the black's king. What can black do here? Well, their queen's been hit by the bishop, therefore they need to move the, the queen somewhere. Because black's f pawn is pinned, they can never push it forward because that would expose their king and this is against the chess rules. Therefore, they would have to move their queen somewhere and after that, you keep bringing more and more pieces closer to the black's king by bringing your knight to d5. And from here, the first and most obvious threat is capturing that pawn on c7, but in addition to that, you've got a hidden trap that your opponent is likely to overlook and even if they notice, they can't do anything about that anyway. So let's say they're gonna go ahead and finally capture your rook in the corner. And now instead of taking this pawn on c7, which is a possible option, but you've got a lot stronger move, knight to f6, check. It's checked to the king, it also supports queen taking this pawn on h7, therefore the knight has to be captured, and now bishop takes f6. And from here you can clearly see the white's idea. You're gonna play queen g5, check, and on the next move queen g7, checkmate. And because you have this domination on the king side, there is just nothing black can do about that, and therefore it's clear win, very simple checkmate. I really love this variation because you played risk-free, basically if black does not fall for this trap, you're still having a great position, but they are very likely to fall into it, and let me show you it with statistics. Now let me show you something completely crazy here. So, here we can see the chessboard as well as the statistics of games, online blitz games, played here in the right corner. Now, if you play pawn e4, the most played move by black is pawn e5. Now, instead of the classical knight f3, you go bishop c4, and black will usually respond with a knight to f6, 
Now, instead of all that, you go knight c3. Again, the most played move by black by four is bishop c5. You play d3. Black usually responds with pawn d6. And if instead of those moves, you play pawn f4, again, the first line for black, most played move is knight g4. And after f5, you can see that the winning percentage here is 76%. So the winning percentage starts going crazy because right after that, black continue with knight f2, queen h5. And now you can see that with this winning percentages shown here with this a little chart, you can see that white is completely dominating here. And usually after black castles, bishop g5, it's basically straight win for white. So what's really cool about this line is that you can see that you are basically most likely to win because by far most frequent moves of black is exactly what we have just analyzed. So wishing you winning many more games using this line. Also guys, if you find it valuable and helpful, please do consider subscribing. It takes me days of, you know, a lot of analyses to pick these best of the best lines for you. And I would appreciate your little support. Thank you very much in advance. And let's move on to the trap number two. What if someone tries the bishop's opening against you? Well, we got you covered. If they're going for this line, bishop going to c4, knight f6, here one of the most aggressive ways for white to handle this is playing d4, putting some pressure on the center right away. In that case, you'll probably recapture here, and in this game, white decided to go forward with pawn e5. It's actually not the best move in a position, if you're wondering what you should do here if you're playing this as white, I've got another video, the bishop's opening, which you may check out later. It got almost a million views already, therefore definitely check this out before all of your opponents are aware of it. And there you can see what's the best approach for white here. But right now let's analyze this from black. Perspective, what if white goes e5, the move which looks very advantageous, kicking your knight away from here. Here there is a very common move which is worthwhile remembering in many different lines it works. Whenever they try this thing against you, you need to counter blow with a move pawn d5. That's the way for you to solve your problems. They are attacking your knight, but you are attacking their bishop, and you give a lot of here space for your other pieces to get involved into the game, and that basically solves all of your problems. In this game, white decided to move their bishop back, bishop b3, now the white, black knight can go forward comfortably, knight going here to e4, white decided to play knight e2, so that in the future they can possibly capture this pawn with the knight, black played bishop c5, and instead of capturing the pawn, white decided to play pawn f3 first, again, yeah, it looks like a good move, this knight doesn't have many good squares to go to, knight g5 is a bit awkward, and Looks good for white, but black found a really, really powerful counter-attack once again, which is queen h4 check. At first it looks like just a, a wishful chess, you wish for the king to move, and then queen f2 would be checkmate, but of course white can just play g3, and now it looks like black is actually losing, because the queen is a tank as well as the knight. It looks like black is gonna lose something on the next move, but black prepared another, this time really spectacular counter blow, pawn d3. This opens up the diagonal for the bishop, and potentially enables knight going there to f2, but white thought to himself, okay, it's all good, but what if I simply capture the queen? And the game finished beautifully after bishop f2, king f1 is forced, followed by bishop to h3 checkmate. Pretty cool checkmate just in 10 moves, and white didn't play any weird moves really, their moves made sense, so I think that something like this may actually happen in your game, and that would be really cool. Yeah, the next trap is really, really funny. Let's come back to the white perspective, because I usually love playing this as white. And now after bishop c4, black responds with knight to f6. One of the ways for white to play here is knight to f3. And in this position, one of the most played moves by black is going bishop to c5, which is completely ridiculous, because it's a bad mistake, it's a blunder, and yet it's one of the most played moves. Well, it's easy to justify why black plays it, because it looks like we have a symmetric position, right, nothing out of the ordinary, but the problem here for black is that white here, here can simply go ahead and capture this pawn on e5, which wins the pawn. On the next move, if black simply castles or plays an impassive move, white is ready to push the pawn to d4, getting these beautiful pawns in the center, attacking the bishop on c5, so that would be just a dominating position for white, right? So the only thing black could do to keep themselves into the game is trying to recapture here, uh, keep mimicking the white's moves. But here black runs into another problem, since it is white to move, he can start his attack right away by playing bishop takes f7, winning this pawn, exposing the black's king, therefore it has to move, and now white has enough time to play d4, attacking the bishop, shutting down this diagonal so that black can't do the same to white, and you got a completely winning position, out of nothing. It's even funny to call it a trap, because you haven't really played any, any special moves here. It's just black who 
you know, simply try to mimic your moves without thinking too much and they fall into this big trouble. And right now, of course, it's easily waiting for white. You want a pawn here, the king on f8 is exposed, you attack this bishop here on c5, you're ready to castle, simply, you know, maybe play queen f3 at some point and black is gonna go down very soon here. Going back to the starting position of the bishop's opening, you, you may play here knight to f3 and as we just analyzed, Playing bishop c5 is completely bad for black, but what if they simply go ahead and take this pawn over here in the center themselves? In this case, you've got a cool move to play. You've got to move knight to c3, which gives you something like a reversed Stafford Gambit. If you aren't familiar with the Stafford Gambit, I've got another video about that as well. Now here, black would probably take here, you recapture with a pawn, and since the Stafford Gambit is pretty dangerous playing it as black, Playing it with an extra tempo as white should be totally crushing, or at least very difficult for black to handle. Now, I've got a lot of open lines and diagonals here to bring your pieces quickly into the attack, and therefore black needs to be extremely careful not to lose the game right away. Anyway, right now the most straightforward threat is knight takes e5, therefore they're likely to play either knight to c6 or pawn d6. And both of these moves fail to different ways. So here you can win either by playing knight g5 hitting this pawn or by simply capturing this pawn on e5, which wins the game even in a more spectacular way. And let's take a look at that. But I can't recapture the knight because then you've got a beautiful tactics bishop takes f7, deflecting the king from the protection of the queen, so you aim to win the queen on the next move. But I can't hold on to their queen because after that bishop g5 forces the king to move away and then you finally grab the queen winning the game. If you're facing a more advanced opponent, he or she may calculate those lines and figure out a seemingly better option for black, playing queen to e7. And now it seems that white miscalculated something because their knight is pinned to the king and therefore it's gonna be captured on the next move. But there is a beautiful continuation here for white. First of all, you can grab this pawn, even though the knight is pinned, it still protects the bishop, therefore the king has to move. And now you castle. It looks like an act of desperation, you couldn't save your knight, so you just let black take it. And black has to capture it with a queen, because the d-pawn is pinned by the white's queen. Therefore, queen takes e5 is the only move. And even though temporarily it looks like black is just winning here with an extra piece, but you've got an extremely powerful attack here after rook to e1. Attacking the queen, and even more so, preparing the rook to go all the way forward to e8 on the next move, checking the king and causing massive destruction here. After king goes to d7, you simply keep chasing the king with a queen g4, bishop d5, and you chase the king to death, basically, with very simple, straightforward checks, and on the next move, queen takes b5, check, mate. Very nice turnaround where black tries to kind of trick you, win your knight, but you turn it into a beautiful attack, which leads to an immediate victory. Coming back to the starting position of the bishop's opening, once again, we already analyzed a number of natural moves, such as knight to c3 or knight to a3, both of them are good to play. There is another move which is also sets a pretty sneaky trap here. If you play pawn d3 here, it kind of looks like you're letting black to play c6, followed by d5 on the next move, and gain the space advantage, also gaining some central control. After that, you play knight of 3 Black happily responds with pawn d5, and there is a move bishop b3, which looks like just a move, but in fact it sets a really, really hidden trap. At this point, black may feel tempted to take here on e4, because then they may hope that you're gonna recapture with a pawn, which would enable them to trade queens, forcing your king to move. After that, they can possibly grab this pawn on e4, and all in all, those variations seem very favorable to black. But instead of playing that recapture, like natural move, you surprise black by going knight to g5. And all of a sudden, there is no convenient way for black to protect their f7 pawn, and basically you're almost winning the game. Maybe not immediately, but at least you get a decisive advantage here. Because the only way for black to cover it is by playing bishop e6, allowing you to take this bishop. And at this point, you have a pleasant choice. You can either take it with a knight, and after that, pawn takes, bishop takes, would give you a great attacking position here. Thanks to this bishop, which controls this g8 square, black can't really castle, and it's pretty hard to you know, do anything about that for black. Therefore, their king is going to be stuck in the center, it's going to be vulnerable, and after you continue your development normally, you're going to attack the king. So that's one way for you to handle that. Another way, moving a couple of moves back here, before you took that 
bishop with your knight. You can also decide to play positionally, which is objectively speaking stronger, but again, it depends on which style of play you love more. Bishop takes, pawn takes, and knight takes e4. Positional way to handle this is even stronger because it leaves black with these two permanent weaknesses, which you're gonna keep attacking for the rest of the game, and there's no compensation for black here whatsoever. So imagine if we just continue trading everything, even though it looks may look like more or less symmetric, but again, thanks to those two weak pawns, which you're gonna easily attack in the end game. For example, you can bring your knight, you know, somewhere here, uh, either to f3 or c4, then you can bring your bishop, let's say here, attacking this pawn, it's gonna fall eventually, and it's a winning endgame for you. That's why it's also a very cool line where you don't do anything fancy, but you win relatively easily. And here is a puzzle of the day. We just analyzed that white can go ahead and play knight g5, and it leads to a favorable position to white, but can white take this pawn instead with a similar idea of grabbing the pawn off someone on the next move? Is it an equally good move for white or not? Please think about this and write it down in the comments below. As always, you can find all the resources that I mentioned in this video, as well as the games in the description below the video. Also, if you want to know some of my secret methods that I use to boost the chess progress of my private students, you may attend my free masterclass by clicking the link on the screen. Keep crushing it, guys, and I'll talk to you soon.